first thing is just we were interviewing Robbie, didn't even see the takedown. How, how'd you take him down? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I got takedown. How'd I get takedown? It's all right. I really have no idea. Was it go behind, I think, maybe? Okay. I'm not sure. What are your emotions right now? Uh, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm really, uh, you know, it is. It, it's a, it sucks, but it's great. Um, it sucks in the sense that someone who's helped me so much and that I've looked up to, my calf, um, isn't here. And, I mean, he, I, God, I want him on that team. And, and he, he is so good, and that's kind of a bittersweet, um, looking back at that now. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, there's a lot of people that I want to thank, um, but, you know, they're, they'll get a thank, a thank you from me after this at my house somewhere. Dan, in that first match, you didn't get any offense going, then you went out there, boom, 10-0 technical fall. What adjustments did you make to make that happen? You know, keeping the pressure, and he, uh, you know, I haven't wrestled Tony in a really long time. In the first match, he clubbed the hell out of me right on the whistle, and I saw stars, and I was like, holy cow, I forgot how strong he was. Um, and it, like, rattled me a little bit, and then I, I kind of knew I was in a battle. And uh, in the second match, you know, I was ready for that. And I was like, hey, he's going to club the hell out of me. It's going to hurt. I got to, you know, get, get ready. Um, I think first match I might have went out there a little, uh, not, not underestimating him, just not fully aware and fully prepared, like, this guy's coming for war. And he is. And Tony's a, I mean, his track record's shown that. He's a competitor beyond belief. He's a tough son of a gun. Um, there's no doubt about that. And uh, he clubbed the hell out of me the first match. And I was like, whoa, he rattled me a little bit. And uh, I, I don't know if I didn't get in my own groove or, or what. And then uh, second match, the pace was a little bit higher. And, uh, you know, I, I'm confident if I get on top, I can, I can do some damage. And, uh, you know, that's what I've known that. And that's what the coaches have been telling me for a while. And I've known that for a while. And, uh, you know, taking advantage of those positions where I am strong. And, uh and that's what I was really, as soon as I got on top of him, give me my gut, give me my gut. I want a gut wrench really bad because I'm going to try to break his ribs. And uh, that's not saying anything, you know, I love Tony, and, but, you know, competitors on the mat, you know, so. When you got back into wrestling, did you immediately envision <coughs> Rio? No. Um, I, I don't really plan too far down the road. Um, it's not my personality. Um, I don't do a good job at that. Uh, I got a lot of support from uh, friends in California, and I mean a whole lot, a whole lot. Um, NorCal Fighting Alliance, a uh, gym that I was helping out at. Um, everyone, you know, I'd work with some of the fighters there just in wrestling, just little stupid stuff. And uh, very, very um, grateful and very encouraging when I, uh, and then one of the other guys that I actually lived with for a little bit, he, uh, I, I mentioned it, I just brought it up just to kind of test the waters about maybe competing again. And he's like, you got to do it. He, he, I mean, he was glowing. He was excited. And that was one of those things where, I mean, like, I just said it. You know, I was just kind of testing waters. Awesome. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was just kind of testing the waters, seeing what the reaction would be. And he was ecstatic about it. And, uh, you know, there was a couple people like that there. And, uh, you know, just to name a few, um, Nate Ducharme and... Uh, Brett Calambini, and uh, I coached both their kids for a little bit, a couple of years, and they're tougher than nails, and their, their parents were extremely supportive of, of me coming and pursuing this, so I'm very grateful for that. You've had a lot of second places in your wrestling yeah, life. sucks. <laughs> what, what is the difference now? Uh, it, I mean, winning and not losing, but uh, I, I think the consistency, I think the cotton mouth now, I'm going to start Sounded horrible. Um, it's fine. I'm fine. Oh, thank you. This guy's a man. Thank you very much. Um, um, Tom said it once about uh, exercising some demons or something. He said it a little bit more, uh, you know, maybe dramatic. Um, but I think the consistency of finishing strong and uh, has become more a part of my wrestling. Um, not having something in the palm of your hands and watching it slip through and, you know, devastating you and being able to stay strong throughout the match, stay consistent is, uh, you know, where I think I've probably developed a little bit. Dan, you mentioned uh, Brent. It sucks that he's not going on. Yeah. How much did his result motivate you to make sure Hawker Wrestling Club had someone represented? You know, uh, 
I know the the real noble um, correct answer is it motivated me a lot, but really it, it made me sad hearing that he uh, he didn't qualify, and then he called me. I mean, it was a minute and a half conversation, maybe, and uh, you know he I know he's just a hurt soldier, you know, and uh, he took the time to call me, and, uh, and then he texted me today. It was like just little things like that, little insignificant to most people, mean the world to me. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm, I'm grateful for him as a teammate. When, at, at any point during your career, did you think, you know what, I could be legitimately be on the uh, I don't know that there was a certain time. Um, like I said, when I, when I got talked about, when I started competing again, I, I was signed up for one competition. And uh, one competition led to another, and that led to another, and I went trip to overseas, and then it's, here you are, you know. But um, I don't think it really came into fruition, I don't know if that's the right word, um, until, you know, I decided to make the cut to 57. And I look at the field at 57, okay, well, Scott's going down to 57. I beat him, I think I can do well with him. And Scott, and again, not talking bad about Scott's probably the best wrestler at the weight. <laughs> He's good. He's good. He didn't win um, today, but, you know, who's to say he won some other time? He's a great wrestler. Um, but I don't know that I, I really necessarily, when I came back, was like, I'm going to be an Olympian um, more than, all right, I'm cutting down to 57. What? I don't, I think I can beat everybody. Um, I'm not saying I'm the best, but I think I can, I can beat everybody as long as I wrestle well and solid and where I'm good, I feel like I can beat everyone. So when I decided to cut down to 57, I was like, you know, I... Well there. You said in an interview earlier that you feel that some of your opponents had a greater pedigree than what you did. Do you feel now that you're an Olympian? You feel now that you're an Olympian that, that you have you're on the same par as they are? I, um, I think I can beat anybody. Um, I don't like comparing apples to oranges. You know, um, to me, and that's what it is to me. You know, um, I, I don't know. I, I I think I can beat anybody if I wrestle well. So. That's probably really not the answer you're looking for, but um, I try not to give people more credit than they deserve, but at the same time, I don't like boastful people either, so I don't want to be one of those. One more question. So on your accomplishment scale, where does this rate uh, on your accomplishment scale in wrestling? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. Dan does a Thanks, Dan. Just jumping in.